Well, we're perfect for you, too. So, out of the box, it's your own. Thank you. Okay, I'd, I'd like to know how many people are familiar with Boot? Boot? Do you know Boot? Uh, so who doesn't know Boot then? Great, I got an audience. <laughs> two, two, three people. Uh, I'm assuming you don't know Boot, boot in this. Um, this talk is mostly about how to, get, uh, how to get Boot to help you write a, a right web worker. So even if you know Boot, uh, there'll be some material in here that'll be helpful. Um, and as for the talk, I'd like to have questions as I go along. Uh, I think the important material is at the beginning. If you understand that, you could probably work through the slides on your own. Uh, so I'd like to have the heavy questions at the beginning of the talk, rather than say anything at the, at the end. I don't care if I finish the slides. I'd like to have you understand what I'm doing. Okay. So, gosh, I can't even read this, read this without my glasses. This is terrible. Um, what are web workers? Well, to a Java programmer, they're threads, uh, but they're handicapped threads because there's no way to exchange data except by message passing. Uh, they're isolated. Um, web workers also have a limitation. In JavaScript, there's no Windows object. If you have a lot of code that accesses Windows objects, like the code that starts your JavaScript, uh, then you have a problem. Uh, there's, a, there's a worker object in place of the Windows object. But part of the problem is ClojureScript is relatively new. They haven't looked at all the use cases. So it's like I come along and I'm talking to the, the boot developers and, and they don't know for web workers. So I had a number of changes I had to make. I had to help get a lot of help on workarounds and I put it all on the slides. So another thing is there's a distinction between a dedicated web worker and a shared web worker. And it has to do with uh, the, the JavaScript file. Mm -hmm. With a shared web worker, you have one JavaScript file that's running your, your Windows software, your window thread, and also the web worker. Uh, with dedicated, you have multiple uh, JavaScript files. And of course, the obvious thing when you're working with Clojure is, oh, that means since we put everything into the JavaScript file, which seems to me to be a little strange, but we put everything in probably for, to be able to optimize all the variable names and everything, that means that we have to have multiple copies of JavaScript libraries in our, in our web application. One for the dedicated thread, one for the uh, Windows thread. So I would limit the number of uh, JavaScript files that you have for web workers to one, so that you have a total of two copies of closure, closure script, which is bad enough. Okay, why use web workers? Uh, the obvious answer is, of course, oh, well, you know, modern computers, we have all these hardware threads, and if you're only using one thread, like a browser normally does, you have limited access to the, the computational capabilities of your laptop or server or whatever. Um, well, that's a poor reason, actually, because the overhead of, of passing messages to the web worker, getting the results back, and the overhead of synchronizing all of this process is, adds a lot of latency. So unless you have some heavy computation, like you're, you're doing all kinds of encryption and decryption in a web worker thread, this isn't going to be much of an advantage. But where there's more of an advantage is when you're doing a lot of file I.O. File I.O., it turns out, especially when you're running on a win browser running on a Windows system. The file I.O., even if it's asynchronous, it ties up your thread, which is absurd. But that's the way it is. So if you, if you want to have a very responsive um, application, you have to put your, your file I.O. In a, in a web worker. So for any, anything that's using any local files in the browser, uh, that's what you got to do. And, that's why I got into this. Okay, so, so basically web workers are a way of keeping your application responsive. Just to summarize that, okay. Closure script issues. Um, there we have this thing called optimized code and, and we don't like using it when we're developing software because it munches all the variable names down to a single letter, which 
makes for debugging hell, or at least it makes it harder. Um, but the problem is, window is, is that if you use non-optimized uh, compiling with a web worker, it doesn't work because the code stuffs a reference to the uh, to the window object in there, and so you're you're sunk. You have to you have to use at least sim the simplified simple optimization. Uh, there's a, another issue, and that is with the the auto reload. When you when you do use auto reload, so that after you've change the file and it automatically gets compiled, then it automatically gets reloaded onto your browser and that also inserts a reference to uh, the Windows op window object in your code. So you can't do that. Um, but there's some, some nice workarounds. Uh, now, boot, in case you're not too familiar with it, is a really open-ended framework to for defining, composing, and running build tasks. It's really, keeps things really simple because there's no standard way of doing things. You write the code that pu pulls everything together to do exactly what you want. You don't have to work around a, any presumptions in the build process. It does what you say. It's just you write code to define your own builds. Um, the, there is a small configuration pro file called the boot properties file, uh, and it's absolutely minimalistic. It contains what version of the boot you want to run and what version of the uh, of closure that you want it run on. The boot internals are quite novel. Uh, we're talking about, well, you know, this is closure. We're talking about immutable data. We're talking about immutable files. Uh, which is created by using links to temporary files and building up file sets so that each step in the build process can only modify the file set that it gets uh, and not change the underlying files which are kept immutable. Uh, this is very handy because um, as you work your way through a pipeline of build steps, you might, change, you might complete this, change the source file, and, and you have a detector that says, oh, the source file got changed, let's recompile, rebuild, and reload the whole process. And so you can have a very dumb steps that just take the same, impu same input and produce the same output, or very smart steps that look at the input they're getting this time, look at the input they got last time, and on only compile the differences. Um, because the data is immutable, we all know about the advantages of immutable data, and it's brought immutable data to the build process by using this uh, file sets to, of links to temporary files, which is a bit roundabout, but it works. Okay, there's also pods. I haven't got, had to get into pods. Uh, pods provide much better isolation between your different steps because each pod can have its own, uh, its own class path. So, you know, that allows you to build complex systems where you have, have to have multiple versions of the same software uh, you, in, when compiling various components. Now, Boot is so flexible that uh, some of the larger shops that are still running Ant, after all this time, they're finally able to convert their old Ant scripts to Boot. And that's something nobody else is, no, no other system has been able to provide. So boot is really the cat's meow when it comes to build systems, unless you're happy with Ant. Okay, uh, there's a demo, uh, W3C, W3C Schools demo out there, uh, which works with uh, a dedicated web worker and a, a client. And what I've done is I've adopted the client to use Hoplon and boot. And why Hoplon? Well, I'm in love with Hoplon because I'm not a JavaScript programmer. And tying JavaScript in, in, into HTML to me is black magic. And Hoplon provides me a simple language that gets converted into JavaScript that generates the HTML and the CSS and gets it all to work together. So to me, it's, it's really nice as a Java programmer trying to survive on the web. 
So we're going to look at the, uh, this demo that I put together using the W3C uh, web worker. We're just going to do a client for it. Uh, and here's the property file. Um, the first two lines I already talked about, you specify the current closure version that you want to work on, the boot version, I'm sorry, the, uh, the boot version, the closure version, and then there's this third line which is just there for, um, well it's mostly there so you can run on Windows, uh, which is something that boot really hasn't until very recently been able to do. I've been very busy working with the boot developers, asking them to make some small changes here and there. Um, it's mostly now for backward compatibility. This, uh, if you don't specify it, it, it gives you a warning saying you should specify it. Um, the requirement for specifying it will be dropped in version 3 of the boot. It's still there for backward compatibility. They, the boot community is really good about maintaining backward compatibility, um, but that means that there's a few odd things here and there, old design decisions, which in retrospect are inappropriate. <coughs> So they're having, so you have to live with these workarounds until they get around to uh, making a version that is not backward compatible. Okay, so let's look at the, um, what happened? I clicked on something. Okay, let's, let's look at, thumbs? Save as, what? No, I don't want that. This is supposed to be a link. This was a link when I was at home. <laughs> okay. So what am I going to do if I can't click on the link? I'll have to bring up... Uh, I'm sorry, guys. This changed. Can you copy it? Just select and copy it? Uh, that's a possibility. I can also just go to the, go to the file using the ID. takes longer to start up than anything. Sorry about this. Okay, I'm, us I'm using uh, IDEA, which may not be... It's actually um, gotten pretty good these days. So let's see, I want the W3C worker project. And yeah, here's, here's the build boot. Just maximize that and... You made the plot bigger? Uh, yeah, I think if I press the control, I can get it. Is that okay? Yeah. Great. Yeah, that's why I selected this tool rather than something else. Okay, so... Um, the first step in the, in the build is the set environment and we'll start with the dependencies. So these are all the, just all the different modules that need, will be automatically pulled down just like with Maven. Uh, this works with the Maven stuff, with, works with clo uh, clo jars. And then you have the source paths, which is the source files that will end up on your class path. And the, now the required is something a little different. These are basically uh, referencing the above dependencies, but these are used as plugins to extend boot itself. So what you're, what you're actually doing is, is composing the boot program here. So that's why it's so powerful. Now, the next thing is we're going to define a development task. We're going to compose it from pre-existing tasks. Or you also have the option of defining your own tasks. They're not that difficult to write. So what we've got here is we've got watch, uh, which looks for changes in files. Speak, which is really handy uh, because when the f after the load completes, it gives a nice sound if it was successful or if there's a compile error, it, it gives you a, a nasty little sound. Uh, I I'm using Hoplon. Uh, it's a preprocessor for closure, closure script. And uh, reload doesn't work in this case um, because we're compiling both the web worker JavaScript and the, and the Windows JavaScript at the same time. And so 
um, we can't have reload because it'll inject that that window reference into the closure, both closure script files. Uh, <coughs> also, you cannot say optimization none because then your web worker won't work. Uh, and then we're using Boot Jetty, which is a very simple-minded uh, web server, a uh, very small web server. It uses Jetty, but it has limited facility, so uh, it doesn't, for example, support static files. But it's very easy to configure, and I, being a Windows user, I have to configure it because, because Windows doesn't allow you to change open files. And when Jetty uses, by default, uses uh, um, file mapped buffer, the files are open, then you recompile everything and, and you want to reload, but the old files are open, Jetty doesn't know to close them, and so it dies. So you have to turn this option off. So that's, that's the boot. So are there any questions on that? Yeah. I have a really good question about the web worker. So about what? About the web worker. Okay, great. So can you, can you again differentiate between dedicated web worker and what was the other one? Share. Okay. It has to do with the, the JavaScript file. So everything's going to share the same JavaScript file. You use the shared web worker. If a web worker has a dedicated JavaScript file that is different from the one used for your Windows application, your main application, then it's dedica dedicated. Why would, you, why would you ever want a dedicated one? Because some things don't work with, with uh, oh, shared. Hmm? There's no window object in a, in when a web worker is running. So if, you have, if you're doing reload or if you're optimized none so that you see your variables, um, the web worker's not, not going to work. So I use dedicated. Anything else? Yes? Um, just about the window object thing there. Uh, so that's their optimization. Is that, is that like a reference in the Google Closure Manifest? Um, yeah, that would be a closure, closure Script compiler. So it's, uh, yeah, you can see that the, the, op the optimization is on CLJS, and that's your, uh, closure, your JavaScript Closure Script compiler compiling into JavaScript. Okay? So now what am I going to do? Leave this open, I guess. Okay. Now, boot introduces a, a strange thing called a, a CLJS EDN file. You need one of these for each JavaScript file that you want to generate in your boot process. And the name of the file, in this case worker, uh, is the name of the JavaScript file that you're generating. Um, and the position of the file within the hierarchy is uh, also going to be the position where your JavaScript is located. So that, that's how you determine the path, of the, uh, path to the JavaScript file for, <coughs> for either your window or your, or your worker threads. Now, I use Hoplon, and Hoplon's very nice in that it does you a favor of generating the, uh, the EDN file for you, uh, for, your, for your window JavaScript file. Okay, the W3C web worker. Okay, so the worker would be here. And again, we can, we can make this as big as we want, maybe too big. Okay, so it's very simple little web worker. You've got an atom called I, and you're, you enter it main, and it calls time count, and it just does a increment of I here and then sends the message with I, and then sets the timeout for half a second later. Sort of a 
uh, asynchronous loop, as it were. So it's a very, very simple little test. And uh, okay, so the ne the next one we want to look at is is the application, which includes uh, which is written in Hoplon, which uses Jetty cells. No oh, control. So okay. This is used to generate an HTML page and the related CSS and the related JavaScript. It's a very thin layer of closure script. Um, and the second half of it starting with HTML down here. Uh, basically, you can generate any HTML structure uh, complete with all the JavaScript uh, integration. So what do, we, what do we have here? First of all, I have this, this little thing up here. Uh, so that if I use a print statement, it's going to come out to the console. Um, we have a cell which is a counter. Cells in Hoplon are effectively the same thing as atoms. They, ha they, they implement the same interfaces. Uh, they might implement uh, an extra interface, but uh, they have all the watch and, and swap and reset functions on them. Okay, um, so we have W would be our, our worker. Start worker then sets W to a, a newly created worker. Um, otherwise it already exists. Then uh, we have reset count, okay. So we, what we do is we set up to receive messages um, when we get a message, it's going to contain our counter because that's the only thing the web worker sends. And then we put that in the counter cell. Stop worker just does a terminate and resets W. And then in our HTML, uh, it's very, very simple. Uh, we, here we have a, a line, a pair place the counter. And then we define two buttons, start and stop worker. Uh, which call the appropriate functions, and uh, they pass, yeah, the, right. So on click, you call the function. Okay, so let's, let's run the demo. Oh, right, CD, DL, go down to documents, uh, go down to A-tree, a demos, CD, W3, great, this is too low, it always comes up too low, I need to fix that someday. Okay, so we defined dev as being a task in boot, so that does everything that we want. So we just run it. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll notice while we're waiting for this to complete that there's a lot of boot commands that are really handy. Uh, the show command, for example, will sh tell you if any of your dependencies are out of date. Uh, the show with a minus capital U will show you if there's any uh, more up-to-date uh, snap snapshot files. Um, it's, just, it's just very nice to work. And it, uh, it, everything runs in a single JVM. So if you have problems with memory usage, boot's a lot better than than uh, some of your other tools. Yes? Where are we saying, uh, where are we saying that the file that gets submitted as the worker should be called worker.js? Uh, that's in the EDN file. The, na um, the one I showed you. Go back to that. Where was that? That was, was that here? No, I wasn't even running that. Go away. Okay, so that was, No. Oh, God, it came up in the edge, no wonder. So, um, that was this file. So the, the par first part of the name, worker, is what specifies the name of your uh, JavaScript file. And then, I'll just, and then if you look over here at, at, uh, the main program, and when we start worker, 
um, we give it the worker.js. So that's the two sides of the picture. Okay, so if we go back to the build that we just ran. So you can see here we emitted a, a JavaScript file for the uh, window. We emitted a JavaScript file for the worker. And sound must be off. I didn't hear it. But so we'll go ahead and this is um, on 9,000. And so here's the, here's the demo running. So we can start when worker and it's just going to count forever. Hmm? I'm sorry? Oh, of course, of course. And we can stop the worker. We can start it again. It starts over at one. No. It's not much of a demo, but you know, we didn't want a lot of code. We wanted just to exercise the worker. Okay. So back to edge. I wonder it looks weird. Okay, so that was that was that. Now the next next thing I've got yes. So is it dedicated or the other kind of worker has to be in its own file context? Dedicated, yeah. Yeah, yeah, most, most likely, but at least these days the channel stays open. Okay. Yeah. Um, for the web, web workers, are you pulling the workers, or do you have some callback that's set up that like you're Oh, oh, um, I'm, just, I'm just using standard JavaScript messaging. So, yeah, it's on message. We set on message so that on then... Both sides, so that you can well, in, in, this, in this demo, I'm only sending messages from the web worker every half a second. And so when on the uh, Windows side, it just say on web worker, run this code. So it gets the message and uh, actually I don't even say run this code. I, I just put it in a cell and when the cell gets updated, then the, uh, the GUI gets reworked as necessary. So you can do it on the other side too though? Just listen for yeah, yeah. It, in fact, uh, in this de next demo we'll do that. Cool. Although you won't see that until we get down to, to to the third piece of code because it uses two libraries and it's the base library that handles the communication. Okay, so I'm going to try clicking this again see what happens. Oh, that one's working. Cool. Okay, so the Duracell demo uh, uses IndexedDB for, for persistence, for durability, I should say. Um, so the, the JS file here, in this case, it comes from a library. It comes from the durable cell library. So that the uh, Duracell demo only has the client side, the, the Windows side. So we can optimize it the way we want. We can, and we can use uh, reload. So everything works in this demo. And I'll show you some of that. We do have to use uh, Boot Jetty instead of Boot HTTP because now the one, the web worker file is a static resource. So we need to have a server that provides the static resources. Um, so the build boot, maybe I can just use these now. No, nope. right click is not working for me. Okay, so We'll go through, at least the, we don't have to restart this. Um, well, open recent. We're doing Duracell. I've been told that was a nice name, I guess. But I didn't want it for our library. Um, okay, so the build boot. Um, Okay, again, we've got the dependencies, um, the source path, um, the plugins, the which are required. And now we see we're using the serve, in this case, is uh, boot HTTP, and it goes at a different place in your composition. 
uh, at the beginning instead of at the end for some reason. And uh, the way you uh, configure it is different. Um, you do not pass it the parameters that you want to set. You pass it a function, which is kind of neat, but also a little awkward. So you have to have this function defined, and it has to be in a different namespace. So we'll take a look at that in a moment. Uh, then watch and speak, I'll hop on, and then reload. I've put in reload here, because that, that now will work. And the optimization is none. So let's look at that. So you have to provide a function in another namespace to set the uh, use file mapped buffer uh, to false. It's a bit of a pain, but it's a lot more flexible if you need it. Um, then we can look at the, actually I don't even have to go back to the slides with this. Uh, we look at the, uh, the Hoplon code, which I, again is a thin layer over top of ClojureScript. Um, so we have a requ require statement um, clear the error, define a cell text. Uh, text is going to be the thing that we edit and display. Uh, now up here, it, the ready that you see being pulled out of the uh, durable cells library. This is a, a Hoplon cell, a Javelin cell, that gets set to true once the web worker library has finished loading all your variables out of the database. So that's really when you want to get started. Um, so we, we call the open here uh, and we give it a map. No problemo. So we, we start by opening and we give it a map. <coughs> we have to name the various cells. Those are the, the, key, the, um, the keys in the database that are used for loading and saving the values. Then we come down to the body, and you'll notice the div here toggles on ready, uh, so that this is only, the, the body here, this div is only displayed after the, file, after the uh, cells have been loaded from the database, which is very nice. You notice there's no callback hell. Everything is just straightforward. This is the, one of the nice things about Hoplum. Um, everything is triggered off of the change values of cells. It's a very, very light uh, reactive system um, because it, ju it, it just generates the code as needed and sticks it in the DOM. Um, and it's set up so that it, not, it can tell from what cells have changed what portions of your DOM need to be rebuilt. So there's no virtual DOM, it's, very, it's not, not a heavy solution. And it's very, very responsive. So then here we have our input. Uh, the value is txt, that's a cell. And on key up, we update the, uh, the cell. Okay, I think we're ready to run this thing. So this is Duracell. Okay. <coughs> Maybe my sound will work this time, I don't know. The nice thing about sound is then you can be focused somewhere else and you pick up that auditory signal. It's, it's really very, very nice to work with. Oh, this thing is still running. Let's can this. Let's bring up the control panel as long as we're sitting here. And then go back and look at this. So again, it's, on, it's only doing the one JavaScript file. Yeah, the sound is definitely not working. It was working, it works at home. Oh, oh God, I, I'm, I've got the wrong. It's 8,000, not 9. Okay. So the thing is, it picked up the hello world from the database. 
So we can change that. Now we can stop it and restart it, or we can just reload it for all that goes, and it's still going to have Fred. Uh, let's make it a capital H. And the next time I run this demo, it'll say, hello, Fred. Um, but but we, what we really want to do is go to, yeah, this is Duracell. And let's just change this. Oh, but let's not have it so big. So we have type, type something here, and we're going to change it. There we go. So it was I just lost my recording. So it just, it's just like uh, fig wheel, flywheel, fig wheel. I'm not doing so well with this recording mic. I got it. Okay, so let's put it back. So this is just showing that the um, auto reload is working. I mean, it does the auto compile even if the auto reload doesn't work because it's a separate boot step. Everything is separate, which is nice. So let's close that down and go back to edge. That's, that's why nothing's working because it's an edge. I oh, should have put it in Chrome. Oh well, it, it's working out okay. So we've done all of this. OK, the, the Durable Cells library. Uh, there's two libraries underneath the Duracell demo. The Durable Cells library provides uh, durable Hoplon cells as a, a JavaScript. And the thing is, is that I'm using Hoplon cells all over the place, but they, they use the same interfaces as Atoms. And so you can easily convert this library over to use atoms instead of, instead of cells. But then you'd need to work out a different API with your application because maybe, maybe having a ready cell isn't enough. You might want, want to get, notifi get a message instead so that you can do something when, when initialization is complete. OK. So let's look at the build boot. So here we go again. Open another project. Open recent. Durable cells. Yeah, we'll use this window. And we'll go to the build boot. And it's looking a little long. Let's blow this up. So this is our first library we've looked at. So there'll be some differences here. Um, first difference. First key difference is we're using resource path instead of source path. Why? What's the difference? Well, you can't tell by the names. But basically, they both update your class path. But the resource path, the things in the resource path get stuffed into your jar file. So this is a library. We're creating a jar file, which might seem a little strange in, in something that deals with, with uh, JavaScript. But the, the closure script for the web worker needs to be no, I'm sorry, for the client, the client side, the Windows library, not the web worker library, but the Windows side of the library needs to be passed in the jar file so that it can be compiled with the rest of the window uh, code. Um, and probably it's a good idea to have it all in there anyway. Okay, so we're using the uh, boot CLJS and we're using bootlaces. Bootlaces is basically it gives you the ability to create jar files to do releases. You know that that's important. Um, but it, it's a little bit of a mess with boot because it's so modular. Uh, that's its weakness, but it's also a major strength because you can just pick out the pieces that you want in in the, your composition. You can use different versions if you want to have different capabilities, as I've shown with the server portion. 
and you can and you can easily write your own um, tasks or subtasks from scratch. And there's a lot more flexibility than I'm showing because um, you can do a lot of this from the command line. But I like to keep my command line short. Um, so this is how you how you set the version. You usually define a constant and then tell bootlaces. Now I told you before. Uh, there's little gotchas here and there, things you have to know to work around because they, the, some of the design decisions have gotten out of date. And this is one of them in bootlaces. You, you really need to set the uh, don't modify paths. And the reason why you need to set that is because otherwise you will get multiple copies of the same thing on your class path. And if you're using something like watch, you're going to get race conditions. So. Uh, when you, but you only need this when you're doing, with creating a jar file, or, yeah, jar file. Okay, now, something we haven't talked about before is task options. Uh, what we've been doing, for the most part, is putting our options, like uh, simple, in this case, on the compile, uh, right in this, um, as parameters when we invoke the subtask. But when you're creating a jar file, there's just a lot of options. And if you're creating it in multiple tasks, it's kind of nice to put it in one place. And that's, that's what we do with uh, dev task. I'm sorry, with uh, task options. So, so we're defining the palm options here. And then they're going to be used by uh, bootlaces in build jar. And then here's another one that I won't be testing tonight, uh, which does a release. Libraries you generally tend to release um, to close jars. So this pushes it right out to close jars for you. Um, assuming you've configured your system right, I mean, you've, you've got to have that, that uh, secure key ring for your, for your, uh, for your passwords. Okay, so let's look at some code. So I have this structure here. I cannot enlarge this screen, unfortunately. Um, so we have the, well, we've got this. Again, we need, we need, this is a, this is a EDN defining our, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, JavaScript file that we're going to use. Um, we have the, the worker sign here. Uh, being a library, it's going to be a little bit longer. Um, did I, oh, no, actually I'm doing this in the wrong order. I've gotten too far away from my slides. My apologies. Um, Okay, I want to talk about the AA worker library first. I'm not going to go into this, but uh, you need to understand what it does. Uh, the AA worker library uh, handles the messaging between uh, the, the main thread and the worker threads. And uh, so it's, you can, instead of working with messages, it sets up a, a an RPC, or what I would call an LPC, a local procedure call, because it's all in the same browser, so it's not remote. Um, so when you, you, when you do a request, I'm glad I'm on, oh, that works too, good. That's nice, that's a, somebody, somebody does something right. So when you, when you send a, when you, when you do a, a call, a local call, um, you have to identify what function it is that you want to call on the other side, and then you get, and you pass the data and everything, and you get back either a success response or a fail response. So it's, it's a round trip request system. Um, but also the web worker can send notifications. Uh, and in particular, that, that one that we all love to use is, is alert. So if your library has some reason to alert the user, it can just send a colon alert notification. And the library on the client side, on the main thread side, uh, already has the code 
set up so that when a, an alert request is alert notification is received, it puts up an alert. Um, so that's what this, this library does, and I'm not really going to get into it any more than that. Oh yeah, and on startup, uh, it, it sends a, uh, a ready notification, a colon ready symbol, just so you can get every, keep everything in sync. Okay, so what I should be looking at is T worker demo. Did I skip? No, no. Yeah, did I, I think I skipped the. I skipped this. It doesn't matter. Fine. Durable cells. I, we were di starting to dig into it when I got confused, and I said, "No, I think th I shouldn't do this." But that's okay. Um, so the T worker demo. Something we can run. Um, it's a very simple demonstration. Um, it just counts clicks. Very, very simple. It builds on top of a AA worker, so it, it allows you to see the API in, in, in use. Um, so we'll look at that. T worker, right? I oh. hope. Okay. So here's the, here's the build for it. Um, it's not going to do reloads. Oh, here's another uh, little feature. I'm sorry, the show. Um, I was talking about the file sets that are passed from one step to the next. And the file set can get rather large, but sometimes you want to see what's actually in there. So you can just put a, put a show in your, in your uh, definition of the uh, build that you want to do. But it's commented out here. Um, optimization, simple because we're gener we have both Java script files being generated in the same bootstep. Um, so we're not going to have dynamic reload either. Um, okay, and then the looking at the worker. Um, like I said, this is a very simple demo that just exercises the message passing and the alert and exercise the API. So uh, I was talking about clicks. So we have an atom, which is our clicks. Um, we define a, a, local RP, uh, a local procedure call as click. And it just does some, so oh, I'm sorry. So it just has some stupid logic here so that if, if you get more than two clicks, you throw an exception, which would get me the failed message response. Um, otherwise, if we're at our maximum and we have another click, we send an alert saying, oh, enough clicks. Otherwise, if everything is just fine, we bump the number of clicks and send the clicks back to the main, to the, uh, main thread. And then here's how we invoke the thing. Okay, and then to look at the client, which is also quite simple. Now, if I can scroll in the right direction. So we have, we're just going to pull up LPC. So this is on the client side. So it's going to use the client side of the, li of the uh, AA worker library. So here's where we define or specify the name of the file that we want to load for the web worker. Uh, here's, where we, here's where we create a web worker by, by calling a method in the uh, AA worker. Um, we define a cell, a ready cell, which is uh, initialized to false, which we'll use to display the page when it's set to true. Um, and here's where we register to receive a message. Um, or rather, we register a function that will be called when we receive a particular notification, I should say. And in this case, when we get that ready notification, uh, we want to set our ready cell to true so that the rest of the page displays. Uh, state, in this case, is badly named. That's the number of clicks that we've received. Um, 
Let's come down. This is this is our this is a method for creating a, our local procedure call. So it's going to call click on the client side, and the which web worker is is being called. We identify through the name of the web worker for JS file. Uh, state, like I said, is the number of click number of clicks. So when when we call click it, it's going to click. I had to do that because we're getting some arguments passed. Um, okay, so then the H generated HTML. Uh, again, the body, we have a toggle on ready. And uh, we just display the text, um, and which is, right, we display the state, which is the count of the number of clicks. And then we have a button for creating click requests sent to the web worker. So this is the T worker demo. So and again this also runs on 8000. So really this the only point of this was the code that we we're looking at that shows you how to use the uh, AA Worker API. Um, but the AA Worker API is used by the uh, Duracell library, which is in turn used by, uh, Durable Cell library, which is in turn used by Duracell. But at the least, we've seen a couple different programs and looked at at least one library in, in depth in terms of how the boot works. Okay, so here we have 8,000. So we gotta go here. Do a refresh, we're already on 8,000, and click. So we click, it's one. We click, it's two. We click, it's oh, um, enough clicks already. Okay, so let's try one more. Oh, we got an error. I didn't like that. Well, it's working as it, does, as it was intended. It uh, exercises the API of AA Worker. So, Unwinding here. So that's the end of the talk. Uh, any more questions? Well, thank you very much.